everybody. Welcome to an episode of Grave Time. My name is Christian Apple, and right now we're inside my house. This here is a spare bedroom, and it's also known as the band room. So I play in a local pop punk band called Light the Way, and this is where we practice. Um, right now we have a new album that just came out back in April of this year, 2018, uh, on uh, Indie Vision Music. The album's called False Memory Syndrome. Um, also, my brother plays in a band. My brother lives next door to me. And he plays in a third wave ska band. And they're called Flip the Switch. So, um, if you want to go ahead and Google Flip the Switch um, ska, because uh, they're a ska band. Um, you might be able to find them on, uh, on the internet somewhere. And we're called Light the Way, and, um, we're on Bandcamp, um, Light the Way, uh, ca.bandcamp.com. If you want to download our music for free, you go for it. Um, anyways, so, I've decided to do this episode, uh, here in this band room, because I just think it's a cool room. And, uh, this episode is actually... <laughs> about a trip that I took um, back in 2013, so it had been five years ago, and it was right around my birthday, and uh, let's just say the trip was not as successful as I, I was hoping it would be, but on that trip, and as many trips as I take, I try to go to the other cemeteries and whatnot, and try to find uh, famous people or historical people, and you know, tell you folks out there um, you know, who these people are, and a little bit about them. And because uh, some of you uh, may not have the interest of going to a cemetery and looking where these people are buried, and some of you probably don't care, but some of you do, maybe. So that's why a person like myself has made this video and made other videos. So thank you for watching Grave Time. So on this trip, I went ahead and went out to uh, Culver City, California, to a cemetery called Holy Cross, which is a Catholic cemetery. There are a lot of people buried there. And um, <clears throat> uh, my main intentions of going there were to basically find a couple people's graves, but most of all, the grave of John Candy. Uh, now, those of you who know me, uh, a lot of my friends do, they know that I, uh, <laughs> I adore uh, Jim Varney you know, for playing Ernest and uh, Paul Rubens for playing Pee Wee, uh, despite you know, Pee Wee's mishap in ruining, basically kind of ruining his career, if you know what I mean, you know, in the movie theater. Anyways, uh, nobody's perfect, we all make mistakes, and, um, you know, I also, uh, I'm into Rodney Dangerfield and, um, a bunch of other people, but yeah, John Candy, yeah, I always liked his movies, um, not all of them, but a good portion of them, and one of my favorites, Who's Harry Crumb? I love this one. I've probably seen this one a billion times, even though that's probably over-exaggerating, but I've seen it quite a bit. Great movie. Another one he did, um, Armed and Dangerous, um, which was a hilarious movie. And uh, there's some others that he did. Um, Delirious, I thought was a really great movie, which is, uh, I'm quite a, you know, it's an interesting movie, and uh, it's I think it's one of his most like forgotten movies that he did. Anywho, um, at, towards the end of this video, I will have a little thing that you can see on my favorite movies from John Candy. And uh, just just for the record, I'm not a fan of the movie Uncle Buck. So, all you haters, go ahead and leave comments down below. Uh, <laughs> I've I never really got that movie, and just you know, I I think the only the cool part was when he made the big huge pancake, and that's because I'm a fat guy and like pancakes. So, other than that, but the trip to uh, Culver City to Holy Cross was uh, it was like a pilgrimage to me, you know, um, to actually find John Candy's grave and to be there in front of it was almost like the Holy Grail of graves because it was my opportunity to be so close to someone so um, not just famous and hilarious, but someone who has made me laugh uh, just from a small child to where I'm at today in my uh, mid to late 30s. All 
Okay, so I finally get into uh, the cemetery after talking to the guard. He says there's no photos allowed. So how am I going to sneak my camera in to the mausoleum? Uh, so I just put it in my pocket, figure, you know, when I go to take the picture, I'm going to go ahead and cough. So I go start walking around, uh, you know, this, this mausoleum. And in the middle of the mausoleum is this big, huge, like, Catholic uh, church. And it's uh, beautiful. And every so often, some people are walking by. Uh, and I get into this little, uh, I don't know what they call it. I guess a little tiny, like, divot or a little tiny little room area of the uh, mausoleum. And um, right um, on the very top is John Candy's grave, and I'm there, and I'm just just feeling just the emotion of wow, I, I'm I'm here. I uh, begin to get very emotional, not crying, but emotional because you know it's almost being starstruck and actually seeing him right before me, even though he wasn't there. He's you know deceased, and his body, you know, is up in this wall and. But, uh, you know, I thank him for the comedy, you know, um, starting out, you know, the SCTV skits and, and um, you know, like I said, Who's Harry Crumb and um, Armed and Dangerous and Delirious and Nothing But Trouble and uh, even playing the voice of that horse in um, Hot to Trot with uh, Bobcat Goldweight. <sighs> Classics classics. They don't make comedies like that anymore, folks. They just don't. But uh, it was just it was so awesome. And uh, So I went and got my camera out, took a little picture, and uh, my camera would make a noise when I would take a picture. So when I did, I kind of act like I was having a coughing spell, so no one would hear my camera going off, because it would, you know, any little noise echoed through the whole entire mausoleum. So after I got that picture, I was excited. I had a keepsake and um, and then I was ready to move on to some other graves. So uh, after going to see John Kennedy's grave, I decided to look around and see who other graves I could find. And I actually found the grave of Spike Jones, which was pretty cool. Uh, I'm not. I'm not really a huge fan of him, you know, he's like before my time, you know, in the realm of, um, you know, parody music and just, just you know, comedy and whatnot, he was a little bit before my time, even though I am a fan of Three Stooges, and that was definitely way before his time, um, just, he's just not my kind of co comedy, okay, well, <laughs> so, uh, so I went ahead and uh, decided to leave the mausoleum, to go ahead and head on outside and find the handful of graves that I was looking for. Okay, well, let me move this microphone out of the way because <laughs> it doesn't need to be in my way, and my drum set's like right here, and it's taking up the middle of the room here. Um, simple. Anywho, I uh, begin to head on out looking for the grave of uh, Bobby Day, who wrote the song Rocket Robin. Uh, I was also looking for Jackie Coogan, who also played uh, Uncle Fester. Um, also played in the his very first movie he ever played uh, was in was with um, Charlie Chaplin. The movie was called The Kid. He played the actual kid. Uh, later on in life, he actually made a uh, trip to the uh, state capitol and went to, uh, went to legislation to uh, pass a bill that uh, if you were a child actor, um, your parents were not allowed to touch your money because back in the day, uh, there was no laws about it. Your parents would take your money from your hard earnings and spend it all. And uh, he felt that that was wrong. Um, you know, if the kids are going to do acting, you know, they're going to make an effort to do that. You know, there should be money set aside for them when they become of age, a proper age, that they can, you know, gain that money. 
Um, so it did pass, and um, and it did help a lot of child actors. However, some child actors um, did get kind of screwed over, and um, no need to mention names. We probably all know who they are. They've all said it, you know. Um, and how they got, you know, bypassed that, you know, law, I'm not sure. Probably a loophole in the system, like everything else. Um, so, I was also trying to look for, um, the guy who played the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. But, uh, I just, I've always admired the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. At least the first Wizard of Oz. Not Return of Oz, that was made by Disney in the mid-80s, that was scary as hell. <laughs> um... Let's see here, and then I was also looking for uh, Bella Lugosi, who is uh, buried over there. Now, um, my truck has got stickers on it, kind of stands out like a sore thumb, and it probably looks kind of weird, you know, parked on the side of one of the many roads that were there at Holy Cross Cemetery. So, it stood out like a sore thumb, and it kind of brought some attraction to it, you know, attention and whatnot, and um, I kept looking over and I could see that security was eyeballing me in the distance. And, um, so I went ahead and walked over to an area called the Garado, and that is where Sharon Tate is buried. Um, I wanted to pay my respects to Sharon Tate. Obviously, the whole Manson murders and whatnot, that was way before my time. Uh, but since I was there at Holy Cross... Why not take advantage of the situation and go and pay my respects? So I went ahead and got over there to the Garado. I found Sharon Tate's grave, stood there and just looking at it. And I just could just feel this sorrow and sadness and and it's just an unfortunate thing because not only was she killed, but she was also pregnant. I don't I'm not sure by how many um you know, I'm not sure by how long, but not I think it wasn't too long. And uh, so her and her baby died. And, um, you know, they, by those uh, evil bastards, the uh, Manson family. And, um, well, while I was over there, I didn't real, I realize, but um, security was coming up towards me. And the security guard uh, had asked me um, what my business was being there. And I was looking around, I'm like, uh, I'm here to pay my respects to Sharon Tate. And as soon as I'm done, I'm going to look for Bella Gosey because he's not too far away from her. And he asked me politely to leave. And I said, well, why are you asking me to leave? And he said, well, we suspect you're here taking pictures and this and that, which I told him I'm not, even though I did. But I just, you know, just took a picture of uh, John Candy and Spike Jones's grave, whatever. Anyways, um, he said, well, you know, the area that you're in is a very uh, highly sensitive area. I was like, sensitive, why? Because it's Sharon Tate's buried here? Uh, well, yes, sir. Okay, well... <sighs> okay, um... Can I go off and look at something else? And, no, sir, we actually really want you to leave. We uh, feel really uncomfortable with you being here. And, uh, like I said, we suspect that you're taking pictures, and, um, we don't want you to take pictures. So here's the story about Holy Cross. Um, <laughs> Holy Cross does not allow photography, filming of any kind. Even if you ask politely, they'll say no. Um, Adam the Wood and, uh, Jordan the Lion, uh, both did an episode together where they were taking pictures and filming and this and that, and in the middle of the thing, they got kicked out. They got booted out, uh, because they were doing that stuff. So Holy Cross isn't like that. Reason why is because the families of famous people that are buried there get upset because they see their relative's grave online, you know, and it's, it's being, um, I don't know, it's... It's all over the internet, you know, their pictures and people filming this and that, and they feel like it's disrespectful and this and that, but if anything, I think it's just, uh, you know, those people, you know, those people were in the limelight during life, and they're going to kind of be in that limelight, you know, during death, you know? And if anything, it's going to keep them alive, you know, keep their, you know, keep who they are alive, even if it's just their grave, you know? So, uh, I, I just, I was really pissed off, but I was really glad, you know, they didn't, like, search me for a camera, <laughs> And, um, so, heads up, if you ever go to Holy Cross, do not bring a camera, do not bring a video camera, uh, because they will kick you out. And, um, they had told me that they, they had pending lawsuits with, uh, families there at Holy Cross, 
um, of famous people that were had uh, turned around and sued the cemetery because people went there and took pictures and this and that. I just don't, I don't get that, you know, it's like, it's a cemetery, you go there to mourn and pay respects, you know, um, I just, I think it's stupid to, I, I don't get that, I just don't get that logic, I mean, you go to the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, they let you take pictures of the graves there, you can go to the, um, Westwood One Memorial Park and take pictures there and film and whatnot, they don't have a problem, but Holy Cross, Holy Cross has got to be the Nazi of cemeteries, and yet they have a gold mine of famous people there. I just think it's it's sad. Anyways, I wish I had real footage of this episode, uh, you know, of going to Holy Cross. So hopefully you just you enjoy the pictures that I've posted in this in this video. Anywho, thank you so much for watching this episode of Grave Time. Once again, my name is Christian Apple. And, uh, yeah, here's my drum set. And, uh, we got a lot of decorations up on the walls here and stuff. Um, whatnot. So, lots of goofy pictures. Uh, us folks here in Light the Way, we like jack-o'-lanterns. <laughs> so, that's definitely our thing. So, yeah, this is the band room. This is the band room. Band room, band room. This is the band room. Bum, 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 bum.